ABS Media Demo. Welcome to ibbusinessandmanagement.com. I'm Mr. Burton, site author of ibbusinessandmanagement.com. Um, today we are looking at the all-important 5.3 break-even analysis section of the Unit 5 Operations Management topic. I do say all-important because this is probably one of the most frequently examined areas when it comes to sitting your IB Business and Management examination at the end of your two years. So 5.3 break-even analysis. I'm Mr. Burton, delighted to have you with me today. Take some notes. I hope you learn something today. Right, break even, we're talking about the level of sales. Now remember, it is a quantity of output. The level of sales where there's no profit and no loss. So we're not talking about a dollar figure, we're talking about a number of unit sales. Break even happens when there's no profit and no loss. So exactly where total revenue are equal to total costs. So let's say a firm breaks even at 1,000, then um, it's likely to be making a small loss if it sells only 999 and a small profit when sales hit 1,001. At a break even where total revenues are equal to total costs. If total revenues are smaller than total costs, we're talking about a loss. If total revenues are greater than total cost, we're talking about a profit. And where total revenues are equal to total cost, we are talking about the break-even quantity of output. Okay, the importance of break-even analysis, it enables managers to look at two things. Firstly, whether it's financially worthwhile to produce the particular product when they're looking at introducing a new product. Break-even analysis will determine how much of this product they're going to need to be able to sell before they start to make a profit. And then the level of profit a business is anticipating on making if things go as well as they hope. So whether it's worthwhile to produce a particular product and how much profit this particular product is likely to bring into the business. Looking at a break-even analysis example here, you will never have this information explicitly spelled out in an IB business and management examination question. You're going to have to go through the question, read through the case study, and pick out three vital pieces of information. Without these three pieces of information identified, you will not be able to calculate a break-even point. Now here we're looking at a t-shirt retailer and they've got a fixed cost of two and a half thousand dollars per month. The variable cost that's directly related to the cost of producing the t-shirt, ten dollars per t-shirt, and the average revenue, which we know from our previous topic, 5.2 cost and revenues, average revenue is the same, same thing as price. So here we are, the t-shirt retailer sells the t-shirt for thirty dollars. It costs them directly ten dollars to make and, and going on in the background, they've got two and a half grand of fixed costs per month. We have three ways to calculate the break-even point. Um, you'll definitely need to know at least the chart and one of the other ways to calculate it. There are two different quantitative ways to um, come to the break-even point you need to know at least one. Okay, this is the one that you have to know. You have to know, you're often asked to construct it in the IB Business and Management Examination. 
it takes time so it's typically worth a few marks on the right hand side there we've got our three most our three important pieces of information again without these pieces of information gleaned from the question you won't be able to um, produce this chart fixed cost of two and a half thousand variable cost ten dollars a t-shirt and they're selling it for thirty dollars this is what a break-even chart looks like cost revenues and profits on the y-axis output um, related to the good related to the time period on the x-axis total revenues if we sell zero we've got zero if we sell 200 t-shirts we have got a six thousand dollars in revenue We need to plot a total revenue line. We need to plot a total cost line. I'll come to this in a second actually. No, I'll talk about it now. Total costs. Oh, yeah. Total costs are a combination of fixed costs and variable costs. So we've got these fixed costs of two and a half thousand per month, and then if we don't produce any T-shirts after that point, we're still gonna the total cost to the business is still gonna be two and a half thousand dollars per month. So at zero T-shirts, total cost two and a half thousand dollars a month, and we'll pick a point out there at two hundred T-shirts. We're still gonna pay this two and a half thousand dollars if we produce two hundred T-shirts. That doesn't change with quantity. Remember, that's the key thing about fixed costs. And then 200 t-shirts, a variable cost at $10 per t-shirt. That's another $2,000 on top of those fixed costs. So total cost, we're talking fixed cost plus variable cost. Plot the points and we've got total cost. Line. Where total revenue equals total cost, we have got our break-even point. Our break-even quantity of output. So with total revenue equals total cost, in this case, it, uh, we could dot the line down and find that that, that is 125 t-shirts to break even. A total fixed cost, I don't know why I put this in last. Yes, I do. I just wanted to show you the break even point, but total fixed cost. Remember the key point about total fixed cost, they don't change. No matter, it doesn't matter how many t-shirts we're producing, they don't change. So two and a half thousand dollars right the way across whatever quantity we're producing okay uh, the second and third ways to calculate a break-even level of output you need to know one of these you can probably ignore one and just learn one really well practice it and ignore the other one so Whichever one you decide to use, practice it. I'll run you through both. We have got up second is the total revenue and total cost rule. Again, we need our three pieces of information, our fixed cost, variable cost, and price or average revenue. And the total cost rule, we've got price times quantity equals total fixed cost plus total variable cost. We've been given the price. It's average revenue, $30 per t-shirt. Fixed cost information is given, two and a half thousand, and we know that our variable costs are ten dollars per t-shirt. So that just leaves two quantities to fill in. So thirty times whatever quantity we're producing equals two and a half thousand plus ten times whatever the break-even quantity is. A little bit of mass, and hey, we're there. So, 30Q minus 10Q gives us 20Q on the left hand side. So 20Q equals 2,500. 2,500 divided by 20 will give us 125 t-shirts. Break even rule. Nice and simple. And this one's easy to remember as well. Break even is all about total revenues equaling total costs. Uh, and the formula is not given in the exam, so a nice easy one to remember. But I prefer 
this one, much easier to calculate and you can't go into the exam without knowing what unit contribution is anyway. So break even, fixed cost divided by the unit contribution. Going back to 5.2, we know the unit contribution is price minus average variable cost. This one, students like it because there's um, no, no algebra to trip them up. Unit contribution, price minus average variable cost. You need that information before going into the exam. That information's not given in your formula sheets. Fixed cost divided by a unit contribution. Dead easy. Price minus ABC, that's $30 minus 10, gives us 20. Fixed cost divided by $20. 2,500 divided by 20. There we are. 125 t-shirts. Our break-even point. Uh, obviously, the break-even point will be the same no matter which way we choose to calculate it. I'm going to run you through a worked example here. Um, you probably want to take notes. You probably want to take notes at this point. So stop, pause, go get yourself a piece of paper, a ruler, and a pencil. Break even analysis, worked example. Okay, the question. Now remember, we need to pick out three pieces of key information. Without this information, f forget it. First thing you do is look for this information. Pick it out. Show me. Total fixed costs or fixed cost information. Here we've got it, 416 per week. It's given. We just have to look and find it. The variable costs, the variable costs here um, for the taxi trip, $8. And then we just need to know the price or the average revenue. And here we are, decided to charge each customer $40 per journey. Okay, price, $40. We've got our three pieces of information now. We can go away and run our calculation. So the taxi company. I'm going to use unit contribution. Again, it's simplest, the simplest one to do. You're just plugging numbers into your calculator. You're just plugging numbers into your calculator. And you do have to know what unit contribution is. You can't go into the business and management exam without knowing this. So we've got our three pieces of information there. We know that we've got the the unit contribution rule, fixed cost divided by unit contribution, price $40, less our variable costs, unit contribution $32 and we'll just simply divide our fixed costs out by that much. So 416 are our fixed cost, unit contribution $32, divide it out, 13 journeys. Always round up to the whole number, always round up to the whole number, just like payback period, we don't talk about um, 0.8 of a good, 0.7 of a good, we're looking at the nearest whole number, not the nearest whole number, round it up. The all-important chart. Give your chart a total, um, an appropriate title. So, name of the firm, what they're producing, and what time period it is being um, looked at across weeks, months, or a year. Now, the axes and labels are always the same. Doesn't matter which company you are producing your break-even analysis chart for, the axis and labels are always the same. 
cost revenues and profits in dollars on the Y for the sky axis, output and provide some information about the time period down the bottom and what's been produced. So cost revenues and profits in dollars and output on the X axis. What's produced in what time period? The IBE Business and Management Examiner will be looking for a nice even scale. It's it's perfectly acceptable to use a scale break and indeed often you'll you'll need to use one. But after the scale break, keep your scale nice and even. We'll start by drawing our fixed costs in first. Fixed costs Just pull it from our uh, three pieces of essential information. Four hundred and sixteen dollars are our fixed cost. Draw the line in. Label it. To produce our total cost line, we just need two points. Two points, and then we can um, put a ruler between them and extend out if necessary. Uh, two points are only needed to plot the total cost line. Now remember, total costs. Our fixed cost plus variable cost. So if we're producing nothing, then our total costs are just going to be our fixed cost. So the total cost line always starts where the total fixed cost meets the y axis. We're going to choose an output level just past the largest amount mentioned in the question. Now the largest level of output in the question was 115 customers, so I'm going to choose the output level of 120 here for my second point. Just past that largest level of output in the question. Okay, 120 um, journeys, taxi journeys per week. Right, now the total costs are the fixed costs plus the total variable costs. So at 120, the variable cost is $8, $8 times 120 plus the 416 fixed cost will give us our, gives us our total cost. That total cost turns out to be $1,376 at 120 taxi units, taxi journeys. 1376, 120, we dot across, dot down. Point in, draw the line, label it, total costs. Okay, two lines down, those are our two cost, cost curves, uh, one to go, total revenue. Uh, two points only are needed to plot your total revenue line. Once you've got those two points, you put your ruler on, draw the line, extend it out if necessary. Bottom left hand corner, always, always, always the starting point for the total revenue. If we sell nothing, we get zero dollars in revenue. So zero at zero, the origin. And then total revenue at output level, again, we're working on that 120 taxi journeys a week. We know the price is $40, $120 times, uh, 120 times 40 will give us $4,800. Plot our two lines to find our point. Put our ruler on it. Nice straight line, always ruled. Total revenue done and dusted. So this is what every break-even chart needs to look like. The scales, the labeling, three curves. Total cost always starting where total fixed cost meets the y-axis. Total revenue always down at the origin. Break even point. Total revenue equals total cost. And a top exam hint here, before you draw in your break even point down in the bottom and label it break even quantity, Go away and do a calculation to determine exactly what the break-even quantity is.
don't just try and guess it from by reading it off the y-axis go away do the calculation and that way you know for sure exactly what that information on the y-axis should be okay our break-even graph anything above the break-even point is all profit all profit now profit is the difference between total revenue and total costs and if the total costs are larger than total revenue we're talking about a loss so be able to identify the loss making parts of the graph and the profit making parts of the chart as well because our fixed costs are all paid for um, increasing profit is made as more output is sold past the break-even level of production right. the more we produce past the break-even point the more each unit of output is contributing to the profit and likewise losses are minimized as unit output approaches the break-even level of production so as we produce closer and closer to the break-even quantity um, we get closer and closer to paying off our fixed cost of production and once we paid the fixed cost um, we start to make a profit each unit starts to contribute to the back to the question we've got the break-even point done dusted we've pro we produced the break-even chart that's six marks the break-even point one mark three marks left up for grab show me okay margin of safe uh, break-even point yes identify 13 margin of safety is that level of um, we look at how much more we're producing in terms of output past the break-even level of output so if the break-even quantity is 13 and we are and the level of demand is 115 customers per week then we've got a margin of safety of 102 we'd have to drop more than 102 customers per week before we um, went back into the red and started making a loss so we call this a margin of safety here's the definition for it the margin of safety is the difference between the level of demand that 115 journeys a week we picked straight out of the question and the break-even quantity of production which we worked out to be 13 so the margin of safety there 115 minus 13 gives us 112 another mark thank you very much the profit and loss profit or loss at 25 customers per week we know we'll be making a profit and here again is one of the key reasons why I like to use the unit contribution when calculating break-even I know that any amount I know that any amount of output past that 13 break-even quantity is going to contribute towards the profit so we've worked out the contribution already that was $32 there's 12 more um, 12 more taxi journeys that are contributing directly to profit after our initial 13 break-even um, quantity so 12 times the unit contribution the profit at 25 customers per week is going to be $384 the profit and loss at 115 customers per week is exactly the same the numbers just gone up the profits going to be bigger so 
So we're looking at 24. That should be 115 there. Right, remember the profits only made after the break even level of output. So any taxi journey there, if we know the unit contribution, each and every taxi journey past that break even level of output is going to be contributing to profit. In this case, it's 112 more. So 112 times the unit contribution. The profit at 115 customers per week is going to be 3,584. And do indicate in your answer that it is a profit. Okay, back to margin of safety. Margin of safety margin, the level of demand less the break-even quantity. So if the level of demand is 200 t-shirts per month, the break-even quantity, 125. Level of demand, 200. Break-even quantity, 125. Margin of safety plotted in between the two, sorry, um, arrowed in between the two. A bi-directional arrow la labelled with the margin of safety and the calculation performed as well. 75 t-shirts. High level students, you will be required to look at changes in break even. So for example, whether fixed cost or the variable cost change or the selling price change, you need to be able to go away and have a look and see the effects of this on um, a firm's break-even position. So we're going to look what's likely to happen if the t-shirt retailer drops prices by 10%. All we're doing is going away and performing another break-even anal analysis with the new price. Price is dropped by 10%, which leaves us with $27 per t-shirt. No, there's going to be no help shown, no help given to you in the exam to be able to calculate percentages. You need to be able to do this. Your final year, high school students now, if you don't know how to work a percentage, um, you're going to be penalised accordingly. Sorry, but truth. Using the um, total revenue equals total cost rule here, just for variation, we've got a new price in there and we're just going to divide two, two and a half thousand out by 17. And the new break even point has increased now. By lowering the price, we need to produce and sell more of these t-shirts now. <coughs> now it's very unlikely um, that a firm is just interested in breaking even or being able to pinpoint at what point they, want, they will break even. They would like to build into the calculations um, a level of profit. How many, how many of their goods and services will they need to sell to um, make a predicted, a predicted profit? So we use that if a firm is trying to guarantee a minimum amount of profit, so to perhaps satisfy shareholders, um, is it worth the sole trader's salary to go in and do this? Now simply, the profit becomes an overhead and must be included. So instead of fixed cost now, it's fixed cost plus profits. So the profit becomes an overhead and it's just everything else follows on from that. <coughs> fixed cost plus the profit target divided by the contribution. Remember previously, it was just fixed cost divided by the contribution. We're treating the profit as an additional fixed cost and dividing that out by the contribution. Easy. So, 
running through. Got a question here. Predict what's like to happen if the t-shirt retailer wants to include a profit margin of $3,000 per month. We're just running away and finding, running away, performing another break-even analysis, um, and this time to determine what point the firm breaks even, and additionally has three thousand dollars of profit on top of that. Here we go. Fixed cost two and a half thousand. Nothing changing there. Profit target three thousand dollars per month. Variable costs don't change. Average revenue is the same. Our price, 30. Our total fixed cost now includes that profit target. So that's jumped from 2,500. We added 3,000. So 5,500 and our variable costs don't, don't change at all. Five and a half thousand, divide it out by twenty. To get a profit of three thousand dollars per month, the firm needs to produce and sell two hundred and seventy-five t-shirts. So that's our new break-even quantity with the profit target 